Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. Some of you guys have been anticipating some brace practice. We're going to get into two different ways to practice the brace, kind of that horizontal and the vertical style. It's really important as you go through this video to only take what you need, right? The brace is a very simple concept, hard to execute, sure, but a simple concept. It's we are moving forward, we want to stop all of our momentum and make sure that we don't bleed past that lead foot and leak all that energy forward. We need to stop so that we can throw the disc harder. So if in either of these two progressions, you're working through these things and you feel like, okay, boom, I got it. Take what you need and run, right? You don't have to just keep working. These drills are just to get you the concept of the brace and just to help you feel that. So once you feel it, move on, right? And then practice solidifying your brace. Also remember, the brace is a concept that's not all or nothing. So if you're throwing and it looks like this and you've got a 0% brace, you're just running past that sucker, that doesn't mean that if you don't have a 100% firm brace and you're staying behind it totally is not progress, right? Progress might look like, in this case, a little bit of leaking past, right? So progress over perfection here. This thing's gonna take some time. It's not gonna be like, oh, boom, my brace is 100% perfect. It clicked, I got it, and now I'm absolutely perfect. Most likely that's not gonna happen, so be patient. Again, this takes people years to solidify and really make a really, really solid brace. So with all that being said, let's practice. All right, first style or way to learn the brace is this kind of vertical one, very swingy. So sea bass, I went out and I bought this for you <laughs> and for the people watching. I, I didn't know what size to buy. I seen him throw a little one, I've seen uh, Ace of disc off, throw a big one. I'm assuming something heavy's good here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on our lead leg. That's my right. My back leg is back here for a counterbalance, right? Cause I'm swinging this big heavy thing in front of my body. So I need something behind my body to balance, which by the way is why we don't twist because that starts bringing it here and makes our, pulls our release point way off to the right. Just swinging back and forth here and I'm on this front leg. So you can use your, if you don't have something like a sledgehammer, you can use, uh, sometimes I have people grab their bag. Uh, something that's just heavy that you can swing back and forth and just letting the body rock through this very natural swing here. You'll see my hip is clearing as it needs to and I'm staying behind. I'm being forced to stay behind this brace instead of going past it, all right? And eventually, after you get that feeling of being stopped on this front foot, you can throw. So let me get this couple wind-ups here. Nice and natural. We're trying to avoid any like jerky change of direction, right? This kind of swings up, and then it's got that lull up here where it swings down, right? So nice and smooth, don't force the arm. Let it swing. It's pretty decent. Oh, wow. Okay, after you practice that, let's move on to a disc. All right, sledgehammers are great, great tool. Eventually, we gotta move on to a disc. I'm actually holding our little spark here, the watt. Uh, just so you guys know, we did get a reorder of these. So if you missed out, coming soon. All right, so we're back in that one foot position. Since the disc is really light, it's easy to kind of force and jerk this thing around. We don't want to do that. We want to maintain the same kind of swingy feel. And I'm using this hyzer style throw here because I think it's easier to feel. If you're using a sledgehammer, you're going to find out it's not easy to get that thing up on this swing plane. Don't worry about it being hyzer. Don't try to get this thing into a modern swing plane yet. Just have it. Same deal. And then you're good to go. That's step two. All right. Step two B, if you want it. 
um, is you can, after doing that for a while and getting the feel of that hip cle clearing, we can come up into this modern plane, all right, this more flat throw. I'm trying to feel the same thing here with the lower body. Still rocking the lower body the same way. Good. You guys can't see this, but the disc, crazy over there. Um, that's fine. That's not, we're not focused on where the disc is going right now. We're just trying to get the lower body accurate. Um, if you try to get the upper body accurate and you freak out right there, you're gonna start thinking about two things at once and you're gonna screw up what we're working on. So don't do that. All right. Last piece of this progression here is getting into it from more of a standstill. So we're gonna start on our right like we just did. We're going to rock back to our left. You felt this rocking here, right? We just didn't weight our left foot when we did this before, right? So we're gonna go back to our back to our right. You can do this pendulum style or you can do it modern either way. We step back, we rock back, we swing back, and then we rock forward. And now we're in that same weighted position that we had here and then we swing forward. So it's very simple. Step and swing, step and swing. I should also give a shout out to uh, Yanni, Disc Golf Spin Doctor, because he uh, showed me this very simple sequence. And I was like, dude, if you don't do a video on that, you know, eventually I'm gonna use that. So here it is. I don't know if he did a video on it or not, but I'm using it now. Step, swing, step, arm still back and then swing. A lot of you are going to make the mistake of going step, swing, and then step and swing, and then a little outswing. Don't do that. It's step, and then swing, step, and then swing. This is very chunked. So here we go. Step, swing, step, swing. And you'll see the same kind of hip clearing motion that we did before. Again, don't care about the disc. This looks kind of like that Will Shoestrick video from back in the day, right? Where Will was forward like this, and then did his thing and it goes super far. Cool. That's the progression for the first style. Work that as much as you need, and eventually make it smooth, make it powerful. Second style, the horizontal brace style. This one is beautiful in its simplicity. Um, we've done the slide on the floor thing, right? That's something that you should definitely try if you haven't done so already, so you get kind of conceptually what's happening with the uh, foot. Then the next thing you should try is like a little cutback here, like this. It's really important that when your toe goes down, your leg's very springy. Um, it's almost as if you don't want your heel to touch the ground. That's kind of how much pressure we're putting on there. So instead of sitting down into this and putting pressure into the heel, we're going to put pressure more into the toe, and then the heel will probably plant on its own, right? But if we go slow enough without too much power, it's definitely possible not to put the heel down. Next dealio here is we're going to set the arm up as if we were in the backswing, and then have this kind of move like that, right? You should feel everything trying to shift forward after you plant that. So you should feel there, that it's wanting to move forward, right? This back foot's wanting to slide forward. This lead arm is wanting to slide forward. Here, there. If you want to try throwing, um, cautiously, if you want to try throwing where after you go here, and you throw and you try to push back so much that you fall back off of it, that's not a bad step in my mind, right? Because you're at least showing yourself that you put more pressure than you needed for the shot, right? So we're, a lot of us are going from not putting enough pressure there and we're trying to get to enough pressure and often the journey is to shoot past that and put way too much pressure on the front foot and then back our way into what correct pressure would be. I'm actually gonna have Mikey show this because this is not one of those things that I'm all that confident in showing and I know that he can demonstrate this way more properly. Mm -hmm. 
After that, all there is on that one is to do it, right? More pressure, better stopping power, making sure that you're not swinging before you get that foot planted and resisting. Foot further out in front. Chris Taylor has kind of speculated. Uh, he's waiting for data to come back on this, but he's kind of speculated that 45 degrees out in front of you, uh, which I guess would be about there, right, is probably optimal. Again, he's speculating. It's a very educated guess on his part um, at this point in time, so he'll have more uh, to say about that later. Cool, very simple, probably underwhelming for some of you that you didn't get more information, but really, this is one of those things where you don't need a ton of information. I know it feels like it because it's so hard to wrap your brain around, but that's where those conceptual drills, swinging the hammer or sliding across the floor or cutting back, those are so, so powerful. Uh, and if you feel like you need more information, just remember that these pros that are throwing now, probably none of them know how they're doing this, right? So to get to that level of form, it's probably not intellectual, right? So if us intellectual people who aren't as naturally gifted have any hope of getting anywhere close to that, the path forward is not all intellect, right? We've got to get into the feel as quickly as possible. So again, I can't stress enough that once you get the feel in there and as soon as you can grab a hold of that sucker and latch a hold of some kind of feel that gets you looking and doing it properly then deep dive there drill deep into that feel and the cues and the things that um, you're thinking about that make you do it correctly all right guys that's it if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one lessons our patreon is in the link in the description below if you're wanting one of those watts and you missed out last time or you got one and they fly amazing for you which they probably do um, make sure you're subscribed our patrons are going to get first notifications but we'll also drop an announcement here on youtube there will be an ad inside a video but who knows how quickly that's going to get to you uh, when we actually get the discs up on the site because you're kind of at the mercy of when the next video drop would be so anyways thanks peace out